Most of my research focuses on consumers' perceptions of time. Uh, largely, I'm looking at how you can alter their perceptions of time to make them feel that time is more available and expansive. Um, in the modern society, you know, people are often feeling really rushed, pressed for time, they're stressed. It's uh, like a time famine is kind of sweeping the nation. Uh, people feel they have too much to do in too little time. So. One of the main goals of my research is to really try and figure out if there's a way to kind of curb that problem and give people a little bit more time back in their lives. So uh, the first paper um, that uh, really came out was in uh, Psychological Science, and that paper was all about how you can use a certain emotion to expand your perceptions of time. And that emotion that we focused on was awe. And the main idea in the research is that if you experience a feeling of awe, it actually makes you feel that time is more plentiful. Um, and we also wanted to look at some of the downstream consequences that that could have. And what we actually found was that people who felt they had more plentiful time actually were more willing to volunteer their time to help others. People felt more satisfied with life, and they also started to prefer more experiential goods and choices as opposed to material goods. When you focus on the present moment, what your mind actually starts doing is you start noticing all these different changes in your emotions, the surrounding environment, um, you know, your physical sensations. And what happens is that your mind just starts to think that a lot of stuff is, is happening in a given period of time and your time seems more full, that more can happen uh, in, a, in a short period of time. Another uh, kind of project that is very closely related to that is one that looks at how a certain behavior can actually expand your perception of time, and that's what's actually slow controlled breathing. Uh, so a slow controlled breathing exercise can actually have similar effects. That can also make you feel that time is more plentiful, you feel less pressed for time. And uh, that's been shown to actually have a boost in creativity. Uh, so when you actually feel you have more time available, your creativity seems to benefit as well. So there's kind of a two-sided coin in terms of how this type of research can apply to the business world. In one sense, consumers are also employees. So as an employer, understanding how you can you know, uh, increase the happiness or productivity of your employees is something that's really important for any aspect of business. Uh, and you know, a lot of research has shown that things like time stress and uh, the feeling of not having control over time has been found to actually have a lot of negative workplace consequences. On the other side of things, um, you know, understanding consumers' perceptions and how to alter them is a great tool for marketers. Uh, for instance, you know, a lot of these research suggests things that you know if you have an experiential product that you're trying to sell um, then trying to elicit awe in your commercials is a great idea oftentimes marketers just try and make consumers feel positive and and that's their goal but research is showing that different positive emotions can have different consequences and so making a decision to make someone experience awe versus happiness is actually an important one in terms of the success uh, of your, your advertisement for instance or your promotion I teach applied buyer behavior. Part of the thing I tell them throughout the entire course is I'm like, don't, do not forget, you are a consumer. You will be in the business world, but you are also a consumer and to try and teach them how to be smarter consumers, um, to be more aware of what exactly, uh, you know, is, you know, marketers are doing out there, or, you know, to kind of, you know, keep that in mind when we go throughout the entire class to make yourself a smarter consumer and a smarter marketer.